welcome everybody to another edition of the Data at Arms channel. I'm your host, Data at Arms. I also go by Colt. And joining me today, I have a really cool guest. This is Simon Eckert, a artist for Masters of the Universe and a Masters of the Universe fan, like like all of us. Welcome, Simon. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Colt. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and kind of introduce yourself to, to the viewers. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Simon Eckert. Um, I'm from uh, Germany and I'm an illustrator uh, by trade. Um, I kind of started as a graphic designer. That's what I learned. Um, but at some point in my career, I switched to freelance illustration. And um, I've worked in different fields of uh, games and computer games and um, at the moment i'm doing uh, packaging artwork from masters of the universe masterverse yeah that's what i do very cool very cool <laughs> and it's um, absolutely great job <laughs> that's awesome um so can you tell me a little bit about your history with masters of the universe as a fan um yeah, I'm a kid of the 80s. I grew up with, with He-Man and um, I'm, I was born in uh, West Berlin. That uh, means I had access to masters <laughs> compared to the eastern part uh, wow. of the city. And um, I kind of got back to He-Man, of course, with um, uh, the 2000X series. Mm -hmm. uh, I I saw that and I had a few figures, but I really wasn't into collecting at that point. I didn't really know if it was okay for me to buy action figures again. So <laughs> that more or less started then with when when classics came around. Okay. Um, so yeah, then I I really bought more of them and uh, got into the fandom and I found um, some websites online, uh, especially like Planet Eternia, that's the big German um, fan mm. site. Uh, and um, got, yeah, got, really got back into He-Man and um, doing art and fan art. Uh, like I had done some fan art online uh, and um the people from the Welt der Meister magazine, that the German fanzine, World of the Masters, um, they yeah. asked me if I could do a cover for them for their fanzine. So uh and, and they wanted to have the anti anti Eternia He Man. So yeah. I did um an anti Eternia He Man artwork with um Castle Hellskell in the back. So this is probably one of my uh, best known uh, fan art works. So, yeah, that was kind of the first <laughs> thing that was a bit more um, received, more uh, widespread in the in the fandom. Um, yeah, and so I I did more more fan art, and um, then I think it was uh, the retro the factory retro fabric that's a um, German. Uh, the two guys in Germany, they reissue the 80s uh, comics, like yeah. German masters comics from the 80s. And they asked me to uh, to do some covers for them, for these reissues, which was pretty cool and, and a lot of fun to do. And yeah, at some point, um, Nate Barge uh, approached me uh, on, on Instagram <clears throat> and he asked me, if I would like to do uh, for something for for masters like for Mattel, yeah. um, if I would uh, would like to do that, and if I had a time, and of course I said yeah, sure, <laughs> I would like to do that. <laughs> and um, he wanted to uh, introduce me to Roy Juarez, and um, then yeah, he sent me an email and we talked. It was pretty <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> so he saw my stuff online and he liked it. Um, and um, yeah, I got to work on the brand. And it's, it's kind of the <laughs> short uh, form of that story. So um, yeah, the first box I got to do was um, Clawful. 
okay. uh, for, for Masterverse. And that was pretty cool because um, Clawful is one of my favorite characters uh, because it awesome. was the, the second figure I got as a kid. So it was cool that that was the first box I could work on. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah. I think I think that's one of the neatest things about um, about people who who work on this brand is that you guys are all fans first. Um, sure. You know, you know, talking about Roy and and uh, and Nate. You know, I, I've, I've chatted with Nate a few times. I've interviewed him a couple of times, and mm-hmm. kind of a similar story with him, where he kind of started out doing fan work and you know fan art for Master mm-hmm. of the Universe, and then eventually that led him to you know, where you're at as well as, as being able to do things in an official capacity. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's very cool. Yeah. It's, it's just something special if you're a fan of a brand and then you get to work on it. I mean, other projects can be cool too, but it's something mm-hmm. different if you're like personally invested and you know a lot about the, uh, the whole stories and characters and you just, yeah, you have the right feel for it uh, i don't know how to put it like how these these characters well, have to yeah. be portrayed yeah you have that you have that connection to it and so yeah it's like yeah your your you know the the inspiration is a little bit more special there when you when you start doing your work mm-hmm. that's awesome um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you said you said uh, that your fir- your first package was Clawful, um, mm-hmm. the, the for Massiverse. What other box arts have you done so far um, that have been released? Uh, I think I think I think officially we're up to the the latest wave that's been revealed is the uh, uh, Sorceress Tila, Snake Sorceress yeah. Tila, Man of War. That's wave fourteen. Or so I guess yeah, yeah. So with um, with, with without without revealing what, what, or talking about what, what, what you can talk about, what, what, what ones have you done sure. so far? I mean, um, I started in wave nine, I think, with Clawful and the new adventures, Skeletor. And I did the, um, uh, the special Vicron box. Okay. That was the Metal Creations <clears throat> exclusive. I've got that one right um, here. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That was a, very cool. A lot of work. This one, I liked all the scenes on the front. That that yeah. took a bit of time <laughs> to do these, and I'm not the fastest uh, painter at that. So yeah, this this took a good amount of time, but a really cool box, and I like the the figure too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then I think I did web store. Um, the Revelations Clamp Champ and one other from that wave that I don't remember at the moment. <laughs> um, I have to look up here. Uh, oh, yeah, it was uh, like the Horde Apprentice Skeletor. Okay, yeah, that, that one was cool. Um, and then came the, the packaging switch to the new uh, kind of packaging with the figures on the front. Yeah. So, um, I worked with the, with Roy on that one, um, and yeah, pretty much did all the core figures that came out since then. Uh, um, yeah, starting with Treptal and uh, and Men at Arms, and the latest ones is the wave that was just revealed with the green. The green goddess, I wanted to say, no, it's a snake, sorceress, <laughs> Tila. <laughs> a calf, sorceress, Tila. I don't know what exactly is her title. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And she, and she's cool. one of those characters that has such an interesting history. You know, it's not, mm-hmm. if you go, if you go back far enough, the green goddess is just the goddess and it was the proto sorceress and it wasn't even associated with Tila at all. But then yeah. as we go forward, it kind of, mm-hmm. the lines get a little bit more blurred and now it's Tila. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that's I just working on the core uh, figures. So, uh, like the the movie figures are all done by Eamon. Okay. And I really really love the artwork of, of that mm-hmm. one. Uh, that one's the Evelyn artwork is great, and the Human yeah. Skeletor ones also 
uh, buy all the movie figures <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, we haven't gotten too many of the movie figures over the years. And there's still, yeah. still some missing that have never been released. Mm -hmm. I think the next so, one online is uh, we've got Beast Man in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, Beast Man. Yeah, hopefully so, we'll see more because those are those yeah, are fun cool. figures. And the ones we never got, like um, like Tila and Duncan in the movie look, we never got those. Mm -hmm. Or Peak Boy. <laughs> yeah, Peak <laughs> Boy. We never got a Sorceress. I also think it would be really fun if they did a. Uh, we we've seen concept art of of Shira, how she was supposed to appear. Oh yeah, that would in be that movie. Cool. I think that would be a, a really mm -hmm. fun figure. That to see in this line. I think that'd be really cool. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe next year the big uh, twenty uh, thirty five. No, was it was forty forty years of Shira. I think. Yeah, yeah, forty. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, forty <laughs> years. Because we we yeah we just did the. He Man for a year, a couple years ago, and then she was a little bit mm -hmm. behind. So, so yeah, I don't know anything about that, but that would be great. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would buy it for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so do you have any favorite? I'm, I'm I'm sure you have favorite characters. Let me rephrase the question. Who who's your who are your favorite characters? Um, yeah, I don't have one favorite character. I um, of the vintage characters, I especially like. Four, and these are the four first figures that me and my brother got uh, in the 80s, and that's Fisto and Clawful and Whiplash and Buzzoff, like all awesome. these third wave characters. Is when when I started. Yeah. Um, and figures that I really liked as toys as a kid were Cyclone and Dragon Blaster, Skeletor, and Leech. These three are also one of my favorites, some of my favorites. Very cool. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's figure wise. Figure wise, that's that are my favorite characters. Awesome. Um, um, like Masters of the Universe wise, I, of course, I also like She Ra characters, but <laughs> that's yeah, the question. Yeah. Motu. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. Let's ask that question too. She Ra's. I mean, she was part of it. I, I guess to my mind, I know the rights things are weird with, with both properties, but I think a lot of people mm -hmm. just consider she to be in there as well. Yeah. So with she she characters, who, who, who are your favorites on that side? Uh, favorite she characters are um, Ketra. That's definitely my favorite one. And um, then she herself and uh, Scorpia. Like, cool. The evil, the evil girls they yeah. are the cool ones. <laughs> yeah, we all like a bad girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, cool. Um, so with your, <clears throat> let's see here, of the of all the Masterverse packaging art that you've done so far, do you have a a favorite piece of art that you've done officially for for the line? Um, I think my favorite one is um, the Skeletor with Throne box that I did. Okay, yeah. So that, that was also very cool. big artwork, and that was cool to work on that and to make it really like dark and moody, give it that vintage feel. And well, I think it worked. It turned out pretty cool with packaging. Yeah, good. I've got it. <laughs> I have it sitting over on the floor in front of me. I got my... Or I got, already got it. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> I found it online. <laughs> okay. And it was a really good deal. <laughs> so I was like, I got it. And then it showed up on my doorstep like a week later, like really quickly. Like I wasn't. Wow. Mm -hmm. like, but I'm happy and it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have it on pre, pre order, I don't, but I don't know when it will <laughs> arrive. So. Yeah. Well, awesome. So that, awesome. I think that's that's my favorite artwork that I did. Okay, very cool. Well, I know I'm really excited for this new wave that's coming out. Especially, what you know, one of my top three favorite characters is Tila. So I always like seeing new versions mm -hmm. of her. Um, I love the new sorceress Tila from the show, mm -hmm. and then, like we said, the the snake sorceress Tila is now coming out now. And I think that, I think that artwork is just some of my favorite that I've seen of yours. 
Um, <laughs> Thank you. I just think it's gorgeous. So I'm very excited for that. Um, in work in working working on this brand, are there any like uh, characters that you would love to to be able to do art for? Um, I mean, we already got a lot of characters in Masterverse, so I guess some of them I uh, won't probably be able to do some of them because they already came out, <laughs> mm -hmm. but. Um, of the ones that haven't come out, I'd love to do, of course, a Shira artwork. I haven't, I haven't been able to do that, so that would be cool. Um, I would have loved to do Whiplash, but that came out at the same time like Clawful, and at that uh, point in time, I didn't have time to do both of them, so I just could do Clawful. Um, I would love to do a Scorpia artwork. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. And uh, Masters. Fisto would be a great one, of course. Um, yeah, I think these are the ones I would like to do most. Very um, cool. And of course, it would be nice to to maybe have a like a bigger artwork, like a for a creature or a, or a vehicle or yeah, that'd be rad. Or even a playset. <laughs> so <laughs> if playset for Masterverse, <laughs> I know some Masterverse playsets would be what they what they should do is they need to do a Hell Skull playset, and you can revisit that. Oh, well, that's my work. Super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah, and the art the artwork the artwork you did for that it it was also you also got to revisit that to do a uh, I'm trying to think um, it, it was a convention thing right um, where it was yeah, like a resin a custom it's, custom yeah, that's yeah. right yeah I the first version of Hellskull I mean the castle Hellskull originates from the German audio play Anti Eternia mm -hmm. yeah so. Of course, there never were any pictures of it, just a description, an audio description of how it looks like. Um, and in the audio play, it's originally described with have, like having the face of an angel instead of a skull. Yeah. But um, in my artwork, I, I don't know, I wanted to make it more creepy and more dark. So, um, yeah, I used that for the background for Anti Eternia He Man. And um, I think the story was like this that um, it was first used again in the DC comic. Um, the, multi where, the multiverse uh, com comic. The multiverse comic, right? Mm -hmm. There's one panel where, where it can be seen. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like the one I did, but it's pretty close. You can see that it's inspired by it. Yeah. And I guess that's probably because if you like search for or did the search back then for anti Grey grayscale there probably wasn't much fan art of it right right and um i don't know exactly who, who drew that but uh, could be that he used that as an inspiration and um the second time it um was used was on the back card of uh, anti eternia he-man in origins Okay. Um, where Axel uh, drew uh, the the He-Man artwork like in reverse, like having He-Man stand on the other side and That's doing right. Hell Skull instead of Grey Skull, and uh, yeah, he clearly used my um, Hell Skull too. So I'm not sure if um, I guess probably Roy gave him like the the reference or the the reference picture, mm -hmm. so he used that. Um, and yeah, uh, just I, I think it's awesome that my fan art, yeah, yeah. Got inserted into the brand like that. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that. I, I I think it is safe to say that you gave life to the visual <laughs> of Castle Hellskull, and mm -hmm. and every, everything I've seen of it looks like what you mm -hmm. what you did initially, and and. That's got to be a good feeling, man. That's awesome. Yeah, 
Super cool, yeah. And it's even on the packaging of uh, the anti eternia He-Man from Mondo in the background. That's right. You, that's right. See that cover. Yeah. And, uh, that's that's cool. And Bertma did that one. Uh, yeah. He made it made a great version. Like he uh, inserted a uh, audio cassette in the wall, as a wall, one of the walls yeah. of the cassette. <laughs> that's such a nice. <laughs> that's awesome. To the audio yeah. Play. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So as, as a as a German fan, I kind of want to talk a little bit about these audio plays. You know, mm -hmm. as an American, I you know I never have had the opportunity to to listen to those. Um, mm -hmm. But I know for German fans like yourself, they're a pretty big deal, and they kind of have their mm -hmm. own additions to the lore. Like you know, Anti Attorney He Man obviously is mm -hmm. is part of that. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about? Yes, the audio plays are a very important part of the German fan community. Um, that's partly because um, we didn't have the filmation cartoon in the early 80s. I think the first time it aired on television was in 88. So that's basically when Masters was over already. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way to see the cartoon was uh, through VHS from a video store. And there were just, I don't know, maybe 12 episodes or something or 20 that were translated and that you could see as a kid, but not everybody had access to that. So, and audio plays have like a big tradition in, in Germany. So every kid had like a cassette recorder and these audio plays were like in every uh, children's um, uh, room, <laughs> so to say, <laughs> and um, yeah. Everybody had some of those, and there were like 37 episodes, and they were really well done and very and great voice actors and cool stories. And um, yeah, they have a very, very high standing with, with German fans. Um, yeah, and there, of course, they had a little bit of freedom with the, with the stories and, and could um, insert some new characters like now yeah, probably some generic ones like some magicians and stuff like that and even yeah. and some memorable ones uh, like like anti eternia human so it's a, it's a bit of a shame that uh of course you can, can't really enjoy it in any other language because it would yeah. like, lose the, the the voices and everything i mean you can read a translation or something for the right. stories but um, yeah, of course, there's also nostalgia with that, like with the cartoon. Um, but yeah, I listen to them uh, from time to time. It's just yeah, great fun. <laughs> That's awesome. I, um, I I know for myself um, when I was how I was introduced to to Masters of the Universe were the um, the Golden Books storybooks. Mm -hmm. um, before before I saw the the filmation cartoon and they had a uh, VHS tape that had like very limited animation of the images from those storybooks and a narration and voices and and I think I have more nostalgia affection for them than I do the filmation cartoon as much as I love the filmation cartoon mm -hmm. I think that's kind of my I think so I kind of I would love to to okay. be able to listen to those those audio plays and. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the only con contact I had with the filmation cartoon as a kid uh, was the um, sticker album. That was okay. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Me, that was a sticker album, and mm -hmm. that had the images from from the cartoon. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was a bit a bit strange because you didn't know the cartoon. <laughs> you just like knew the mini comics and maybe some other comics and, and the figures and everything looked a bit different and a bit um, <laughs> more simple <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it doesn't matter I've, we collected it anyway <laughs> yeah yeah so, oh, pretty cool and i still that's have cool. my my album from from childhood oh that's awesome that's wonderful um well very cool uh i don't know i think i'm kind of out of questions for you um, <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we uh <laughs> Before we leave, I'd like to ask you, um, this is something I, I, I try to ask all of my guests, but when it comes to Masters of the, of the Universe, obviously we're, we're 
like we were talking earlier, you know, we just celebrated the 40 year anniversary of, of the franchise. Um, in, in your opinion, why do you think the brand has persisted as, as long as it has and had such a lasting impact for fans? Um, and I think because it was so well known back in the day, um, just, pretty much everybody our age remembers it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then it had like this long break uh, in the 90s. And yeah, um, I don't know. I think it's a big part is, is nostalgia, but um, it's also, yeah, it's just um, a great world. Like the world of Eternia is so, it's just like a happy place. It's it's just a happy fantasy world that can also be dark and that can also be, I don't know, it can be so many things and um, it's difficult to explain. It has a certain fascination <laughs> and it has so many yeah, memorable, memorable characters and so such great striking visuals. I think that art is a big part of it. Like the all the, the art that went into the initial development of the brand, of the figures, of the packagings, of the cartoon, that was uh, a huge part of this world was just made up of, of art that came with the figures, with the yeah. comics and everything. And yeah, I think that made up a big, uh, yeah, the fascination of, of it, a big part of it. And um, yeah, and I'm happy that, that it is still appreciated nowadays. And the new packaging also has artwork. Yes. And um, that's a big part. It's, it's just a big part of Masters. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't really think of any other any other type of, of franchise out there that's so art-driven. You know, everything, mm -hmm. you know, the old toys have those beautiful you know, paintings and illustrations yeah. by Rudy and, and Earl Norum and that are, you know, associated with it. Yeah. It really is and, kind of a unique thing. And also, I don't know, the fans are so loyal to the brand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. all these, these fan created stuff that's out there, um, be it customs or fan fictions, artworks, uh, people who make videos and reviews and just, I don't know, it's um, people who organize conventions. It's just, um, yeah, so many, <laughs> such yeah. a great community. I think the community is really, really cool. And, I agree. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's probably the best community there is. Just, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's like the Grayscale convention where I, Go pretty much every year. That's the uh, big convention here in in Germany, and um, mm -hmm. I've met so many nice people there and made friends. And it's just it's just cool, and it's a great feeling. You instantly connect through masters. It doesn't yeah. matter from which walk of life you come. It's just everybody knows He Man and everybody likes the masters, and um, it's it's a great feeling. It is. And to be, you know, I think it's neat that it is such a fan driven um, brand, I, you know, without the fans, it wouldn't be what it is today. Um, I think that's just evidenced by how many fans are currently working in an, in an official capacity mm -hmm. on this brand. You know, people like you, people like Nate, Roy, Ted Biaselli, Rob David, you know, all of these people are their fans first. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty special. And, and yes, like you said, the, the community, easily easily the best fan community there is out there. Yeah, though I have to say that I don't know so many other fan communities. <laughs> because, <laughs> um, if you're fan, if you're a big fan of one brand, you, you just can't. I couldn't handle like several fandoms. Probably <laughs> 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 from from their perspectives, they they like their. We love masters, so <laughs> that's that's right. Well, si well, since we're, since we're since this is a masters channel, we'll just go ahead and say that it, that masters is the best best fan yeah, community there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, 
the best one, the best brand, the best, best people. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that's what I love about it so much is, you know, I've been, I've been a part of this, the, 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 the fan community for, you know, well over 20 years now, um, since early, early internet days when people started making connections and, and sharing mm -hmm. things. And I just, it's one of those, it, you know, it feels like a, a second family. Um, and a mm -hmm. lot of the people that I've met have become true lifelong friends, you know, through mm -hmm. our shared love of masses of the universe. And I guess as a, as a fan myself and being able to appreciate the work that you do for this, this community and for this brand that I love dearly, you know, thank you for your beautiful artwork and for your passion. You know, I want to make <laughs> sure that, that, you know, yeah. thank, people like you, you are, are. It's it's really awesome to be able to work for the brand, and then it's double awesome if people just like what you do. So yeah. um, if you get positive feedback, and it's um, yeah, it's great because I I do um, always try to to get the best result for the artworks and to. Uh, pour my heart into it, so <laughs> yeah, to to, um, to make it look to make it look awesome. It's just um, I want it to be great. It's not just a job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe it sounds cheesy, but it's more <laughs> than just a job in this case. <laughs> yeah, well, it you know it's evident that that your heart has been poured into it, and and that the passion is there, and and so congratulations, like. I'm, I'm, I love your stuff. <laughs> I love seeing it. Thanks. And uh, also a big thank you to, to Nate and Roy, um, mm -hmm. without whom I wouldn't be there <laughs> to, um, have to work on the brand. Yeah, they that's very cool. Too. So very cool. Yeah. So thank you. Well, before we kind of end things here and wrap up, is there, do you want to share where people can find you to follow your more of your work online? Um, the best thing is probably um, Instagram. That's where I post stuff. Or at the moment, it's a mostly shared post with Roy yeah. of the new packaging artwork. Um, so yeah, Instagram is the, the handle is Simon dot art. Awesome. Yep. And I'll include that in the in the show description, the episode description on YouTube mm -hmm. so people can easily find that. Um, yeah, so there you can see also some of my other artwork that I did before yeah. Master. And yeah. Yeah, I, I probably post some personal artwork again sometime when I <laughs> time. But, uh, yeah. Working on, on Masterverse is pretty time consuming, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, um, I think this is as good a time as any to kind of wrap things up. But okay. once again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. Um, I truly appreciate it. And it was wonderful to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, I, <laughs> and, to, and to everybody out there watching, thanks for, for supporting this channel and for watching. Please uh, like, share, and sus subscribe, all those wonderful internet terms that we do. And please follow Simon and, and support his, his work. And until next time, this has been the Data Arms channel with Simon Eckert. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.